Well, hey everybody, it's Chuck in the Cybertruck. Um, I just figured I would go on a little bit of a drive. I've got a few ideas brewing in my head. Um, and one of them is to take conversations in the truck and syndicate them into a podcast. Uh, most of my content is basically me driving and testing. And while I love doing that, and I will continue to do that, um, I think I want to pay attention to this unprotected left-hand turn first. Are you gonna go for this? Oh, don't go for that. Okay. Um, I wanna take the drives that I'm doing, the camera setups that I have, and I kinda wanna continue kind of the long form conversations that I, I sometimes do on these drives um, and talk at the same time while I'm driving with perhaps whatever the subject of the day is. In the past, okay, you're gonna go for that. If you gotta go, you better not stick your butt out. Okay, and this is a disengagement for not getting into the median. Um, one second. Did not fit into the median on an unprotected left turn. That was uncomfortable. What a way to start a drive uh, to talk about a new media format. In any case, uh, the Cybertruck and the unprotected left-hand turns are still a little bit clunky. Um, it doesn't fit in the median the way it used to. And I'm having to kind of, it, it works when there's no oncoming traffic, but it sort of just lumbers out there and doesn't really stop um, kind of the way it should to, to fit itself in the median to turn it into a two-part problem. So in any case, let me go back to what I was talking about, starting off this drive with an unprotected left turn. Um, a lot of the time while I'm driving, we're talking about the software and we're also talking about events of the day. And I think I want to turn some of the, the conversations and not necessarily have to wait for a testing event or software. So I'm just going to get the camera rolling, probably put the 360 camera on top. Uh, maybe or maybe not blow up the screen until I get this uh, screen zoom uh, research project done and uh, talk about what's going on. Uh, in this week's kind of news, first of all, we have a... Starship launch this afternoon. It got it's gotten delayed a few times, um, which is probably most. It was due to weather. It was really rainy there yesterday, but apparently the weather looks really good today. Um, but New Glenn got the launch last night at 1 a.m. I did not stay up and uh, watch that because the previous one was scrubbed, and I didn't want to stay up just to watch another scrub. Uh, but New Glenn got airborne. And get, they got to orbit on their very first try that succeeded in launching, which was a huge thing. Uh, but apparently an unsuccessful um, booster landing attempt. I don't think we have a whole lot of detail or video on that yet in public, but congratulations to Blue Origin on, on getting that uh, new Glenn Airborne and um, into orbit. Huge, huge accomplishment. I'm really excited about Starship launch this afternoon. But what I wanted to talk about today was a little bit of a side conversation that was going on on X. And for those of you that are listening and, and don't follow me on X, I'm at Chazman on X. Most of you that are listening to this probably follow me there. And I post pretty much daily content there uh, and, and, and kind of weave, weaves into my uh, video content. Um, there was a conversation about cameras and camera cleaning. And honestly, it started from Chris and Stephanie, Dirty Tesla and wife of Dirty Tesla coming uh, leaving their Florida um, kind of, I guess, winter uh, getaway and going back to Michigan and talking about all of the salt and the snow and the cameras that just are not staying clean. And, you know, Tesla AI kind of came out with a post that said, well, you know, get out there and clean your cameras. And, and I replied to the Tesla AI post that says, wait a minute, if we're going unsupervised, that's not part of the plan, right? You've got a plan for this. It was kind of a I don't want to, I guess the post is like keeping the Tesla AI account honest on saying this isn't our plan. I took a little bit of heat for kind of calling out Tesla AI's media account. And, and I, while I'm, I know Tesla at Tesla has a media account, I don't know if Tesla AI is managed by the same media person. Uh, I know who the media person is for Tesla, but I'm not sure if that person manages all of them. Uh, but if they do, they probably, you know, have rights to, to post different things. Um, but it is an important part of their communication strategy. And I, I, I didn't, I, I wasn't comfortable, um, necessarily hearing that, wait a minute, we got to get out there and clean our cameras. How in the world are we going to do this with a unsupervised model Y or an unsupervised model three S X or Cybertruck? Granted the robo taxi is a completely new platform and they may have some new tricks up their sleeve for that. But our existing cars that have been supposedly promised to be unsupervised at some point just 
I, it, it felt, you know, first of all, I'm the camera guy, right? I'm the one that's complaining about this B pillar location. And until they added that bumper camera on the Cybertruck and now the Model Y, no additional cameras were being added. I'm still not confident that bumper camera is the solution to my issue with the B pillar. Uh, the B pillar, for those of you that haven't heard this before, is too far back in my mind for a single uh, 90 degree view of high speed cross traffic. I'm not worried about low speed cross traffic because the creep will work, but the high speed cross traffic, hey, just like that unprotected left hand turn we just jumped out in front of with a cyber truck, it just, the, the range and distance of a single camera just has not shown me yet that it can find the right gaps and make the right decisions and, and estimate speeds appropriately. And then of course the creep is a mitigation, a mitigation being a a, a maneuver to um, remedy the risk created by a camera so far back. Whereas if we had cameras on the front of our car, we wouldn't have to do the creep at all. That's kind of what I mean when I say they're superhuman location by putting a camera much further forward than a human driver can have. In any case, that's my argument on the cameras. But this camera cleaning thing came up. And of course, when, when those of you driving north of Florida and are having salty roads, a lot of uh, precipitation, both frozen and unfrozen precipitation, and you get that haze of salt on there, it, the cameras just can't be used for FSD. And we get these alerts about um, you know FSD being degraded. Uh, now, the Cybertruck has a washer on its front bumper camera. Um, and, you know, for those of you that don't know where it is, I can come down here to the front. And granted, if you're on the podcast, you can't hear this. There's in, in the front bumper camera view, there's a little icon for washing it. And as I press it, you can see the little blue juice or whatever I've got in my windshield wiper reservoir is being sprayed. Uh, that is the only camera on the car that has that. I would argue that that camera isn't even being used yet. And the one that really needs it is this rear one back here, the bumper, uh, the, the tailgate camera. Uh, the tailgate camera, in some scenarios, gets much, much dirtier uh, and could use that same washer also. Um, in any case, so camera cleaning is one of these unknowns. And everybody's kind of joking that, you know, okay, we're going to put an Optimus robot at supercharger stations and Optimus is going to come out with his sh sham wow or his microfiber cloth and, and, you know, wipe your cameras for you. I don't think that's happening. First of all, you know, if people are, you know, cutting uh, supercharger cables for the copper, imagine what they would do with an Optimus robot, you know, sitting out there waiting 24 seven. Uh, until they arm the Optimus robot to defend itself, I don't really think that is a likely outcome. Uh, in any case, I think that Tesla AI responded uh, to this post, you know, I, thank you for doing that, Tesla. If you're listening to this podcast or watching this video, thank you for responding. First of all, it shows that you're watching, uh, you're concerned, and you care about, you know, what people are thinking. And, um, I, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get our, our end trip here. I'm going to have it navigate back to the FSD return and let the Cybertruck figure its way out of this uh, park. Pay attention to the road, Chuck. I am paying attention. So Tesla AI responded, and in their response, they basically said, we have a, you know something else in work. So that something else in work, of course, is, is great to hear, but now we're scratching our heads going, what does that mean? Does that mean there is a camera retrofit coming? Does that mean they're going to put washers on all of our cameras? Does that mean that uh, Robotaxi is going to have something, but all of the other cars are not, and we're going to kind of be left out without you know, camera cleaning on our own cars? And honestly, I am okay with that. I don't expect a retrofit of our camera cleaning system to probably be installed on my Model Y or my Cybertruck. But there are a lot of people out there that do want to hold on to the promise of a completely unsupervised uh, personally owned vehicle and this camera cleaning could be part of that especially up in the north uh you know in the winter um and oh by the way the cyber truck did a great job navigating around that parking lot going through the pickleball courts and finding its way out uh, a very good job there so camera cleaning and a couple people posted and there was some patent technology out there that was patented by tesla with lasers. And this predates the Cybertruck because there was a lot of question marks about this 
big ass windshield wiper we've got here on the Cybertruck and going, how in the world are they going to clean this windshield on the Cybertruck? And the thought was it was going to be laser cleaned. I don't know how that technology would work. Are you, are you steaming away the, the droplets or I, I don't know. Um, and obviously as a pilot, we have a, a huge concern with uh, lasers being focused at the flight decks uh, from the ground and blinding us. They're typically green lasers, and I know there's technology out there to allow lasers to be safe, but I'll just say that those same safe lasers might also not have the energy uh, to clean a camera. So there's a little bit of a eye protection kind of a thing there. But then someone made the, made the thought of what well, could the camera cleaning technology be about lasers? And could there be a laser inside of the glass that can clean off dirt or salt uh, or, or whatever? And I don't know how that would work. Maybe some of you that are watching this uh, video or, or listening to the podcast can answer that. Um, but I'm really curious, is, is that something? And then there's a lot of other ideas out there about, well, let's just mimic the human eye. Let's create a lens that has a washing kind of a, much like an eyelid does, you know, with a, a fluid that is constantly cleaning the lens. Um, obviously, that would be something completely different because most of the cameras right now are buried behind uh, glass, specifically the B pillar and the forward cameras up here are behind glass. The repeater and the tailgate and the bumper camera are exposed lenses and could use some sort of lens cleaning technology, um, but that's yet to be determined. So, I don't know. This, this is kind of where the conversation is. You know, are cameras, camera cleaning, uh, a critical path? I don't think they are. Uh, there's probably something in work. But when you take away extra sensors, and I'm not advocating for LiDAR uh, in this case, I still am a radar, especially high definition radar advocate and possibly FLIR. I, I like sensors. I do think they make the vehicle superhuman, you know, and, and the argument of, you know, if a human can drive, so can the car. I agree with that, but we have not reached uh, human level latency, we have not reached human level resolution, and we definitely don't have human level camera placement, uh, specifically uh, with perspective and parallax. So we do have a lot of cameras, but they're subject to certain things that the human eyes are not because of parallax and our ability of rotating both our neck up and down, left and right, and our each individual eyeball uh, you know, having its own access to uh, stay focused while the head is turning. Um, the car cannot do that. Uh, matter of fact, James Dalma has even argued that while uh, a Tesla is turning, a camera such as the B pillar that is fixed out in the horizon as it yaws, because that camera does not have the ability of focusing on a specific object, it has the lens blurring effect created by yaw of a camera that cannot independently stay focused. If you've ever bought an Osmo uh, stabilization lens, and I've got one of these Osmo Pocket 3 cameras, um, if you've ever, you, it's gimbalized in all axes, and when you yaw the camera, the gimbal allows the, um, the yawing moment to not be faster, perhaps, than the focal capability of the lens. And it creates this beautiful cinematic effect, uh, but it also kind of makes you think about the yawing effect of a camera when you move it very quickly. I'm out of my lane here on this one uh, a little bit because I don't have any data to show you that yawing effect, but others have, have talked to me about it and I just feel like it's, it's worth mentioning. So in any case, cameras. I think that it was a great conversation. I think that it's, it's worth diving a little bit more into. And while I'm just sitting here driving around in the cyber truck on uh, FSD 13.2.4 and haven't had to do uh, anything since that first disengagement, the unprotected left-hand turn, um, I figure I'd talk to you about it. So I don't know. What do you guys think about that? I, I want your input in some comments, both on YouTube, on X, or wherever you listen to this, uh, to tell me, do you think that this conversational format can work? Uh, will you listen to it? I, I personally know I love to have a set of podcasts that I can just have on my playlist and I can listen to them. Uh, I do kind of need to recognize that if I'm combining video and audio formats for people in different formats, I need to acknowledge uh, and refer to things uh, in words that might be obvious uh, to someone watching the video. Uh, you know, and, and then the reach, does, does the long form work on specifically on, on conversations like this? I do think to have long form conversation, you do need to have some 
uh, dialogue with someone uh, in, in, in the car, uh, the truck does not lend to that format unless we're having a ride along or a first impressions video or doing some sort of collaboration with somebody else. So that's something to think about uh, also. And uh, I have distributed this. It is available on Apple Podcast. It is available on Spotify. I've pushed it out to all of the other ones so it should propagate. Uh, and the name of the podcast is essentially going to be Aviation uh, and Autonomy with Chuck Cook. Um, because I'm combining both my pilot experience, the autonomy that I'm learning along with you, and a lot of other subjects that perhaps interest me uh, and, and, and to talk about them together. Maybe the name isn't the greatest, and if you got some suggestions, if you think it's kind of, I don't know, stupid or cheeky or something like that, uh, I'm open to suggestions uh, on that also. But I'll try to do these uh, each time and, uh, and post them, distribute them, and, and see what the reach is. But I think I'm going to end it there. I appreciate you guys uh, jumping on with me today. Uh, and let me know what you think about the video format. If you are watching it on YouTube or X, and then if you're listening to this to audio only, if you can just uh, reach out to me somehow and uh, leave a comment somewhere else and tell me what you think, uh, whether or not this format works, um, I appreciate all of the feedback. But once again, FSD is doing a great job where I'm able to talk and chew chewing gum and, and record video at the same time. So... Have a great day, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon.